rescue operations continue as 21-story building collapses at Gerald Road, Ikoyi, Lagos. COP26, President Buhari pledges Nigeria's commitment towards expanding Great Green Wall program in Africa. Supreme Court to hear Rivers and Emu oil well suit 2022. Plus, Nigerian Army fingers IPUB and ESN in killings, arson, and destruction in Southeast. Of these criminals, and the public needs to understand that. is NTA Network News. We're live in Abuja. I'm Ian Ray John. Adiola Komi Akure joins us from Lagos. Welcome. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has set the stage for world leaders to make history by taking the needed action to accelerate the fight against climate change. At the Leaders' Summit in Glasgow, world leaders, including President Muhammad Buhari, will make presentations to the COP26 Climate Conference on their bold ambitions to reduce carbon emissions. Anangie Fineface reports that over 120 world leaders are attending the conference. The six years since Paris agreements have been the six hottest years in history and even in the best scenario of climate action. Temperature will rise above two degrees. If working apart, we are a force powerful enough to destabilize our planet, surely working together, we are powerful enough to save it. Hosted by the United Kingdom with support from Italy, the Leaders' Summit at COP26 is a significant, symbolic and impactful opportunity to put climate action on the global stage. But we have the opportunity and we have the duty to make this summit the moment when humanity finally began, and I stress began, to defuse that bomb. The overall target is for world leaders to put forward high-level ambition towards securing global net zero and keeping 1.5 degrees in reach. Enough of brutalizing biodiversity. Enough of killing ourselves with carbon. We are digging our own graves. Leaders are also expected to commit to adapting to protect communities and natural habitats, as well as mobilize climate finance. Onegye Fineface, NT News. Back home, President Muhammad Buhari has urged Nigerian youths to continue to seek the path of self-actualization with a promise that the administration will continue to support their efforts by creating an environment that enables the fulfillment of their dreams. This was contained in his message at the Maiden National Youth Conference held in Abuja. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. In this country, whatever it is that you are doing, keep moving. Don't look back. You will win eventually. Keep moving ahead. Whatever the situation, we move. Whatever the situation, we move. We move. That is a motivational call of a war leader charging the youth to join in the battle to building a great nation. It is up to this made in addition of the National Youth Conference and to commemorate the National Youth Day with the theme energizing the youth for development inclusiveness, governance, security, and employment. The vice president says the signing into law of the Not Too Young to Run bill almost three years ago opened the door for youth inclusion in political process and by extension in governance. There's no more golden time than the present that you're in. So seize it. Progress is not made by looking back, but by looking ahead. Your generation has been gifted with so many tools and opportunities. You are at the most developed time in the history of technology in the world. Everything that you, have, that you have today was much, much better than previous years. So with this, you can shape not just your destiny, but the destiny of your nation. It's up to you to use them well. Refuse to succumb to hopelessness. The youth are not just our future. They are our present. 
They must be involved in our politics, nation building, peace and security efforts. The youth to engage is very critical, especially because many of them have never been in governance. It's very easy to sit back and criticize the way things are being done. But his speech, the way he is so inclusive to make sure that the youths have been carried along in this uh, administration, I believe that the youth have future in Nigeria to protect. Well, in the words of the Vice President, Nigeria needs a youth not only to be supported and developed, but to understand the dimensions of political development, graph the issues, and place themselves in a position of co-builders. From the National Stadium here in Abuja, Jide Onifade, NT News. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari, before departing the country for Glasgow, gave audience to one of the leading members of the All Progressives Congress, Alimodo Sharif. The former Borno State Governor, after the meeting, told NTA that he was warmly received by the President and matters of national importance were discussed. Well, you know, it's uh, always an honor for any Nigerian to have a privilege to come and see the President. And discussions with Presidents are uh, is supposed to be uh, a discussion that uh, will only be revealed by the His Excellency. I uh, come to visit him and we have a, a discussions uh, of uh, national importance. Uh, importance. Okay. And in security, the Nigerian military has launched the maiden edition of the Defense Headquarters Joint Operations Planning Exercise, codenamed Skylock. The Defense correspondent, Ismail Musa, who was at the Army War College of Abuja, venue of the event, tells us the essence of the exercise in the quest to secure the nation. These are participants from the Nigerian Army, Navy, and Air Force War Colleges in a joint operations planning exercise codenamed Skylock 2021, organized by the Defense Headquarters at the Nigerian Army War College. The conduct of this joint operations planning exercise is yet another milestone to promote understanding and collaboration not only between the colleges, but also to enhance jointness in our armed forces as a whole. The combination of the training packages of the three colleges we involve aspects of national security, interagency coordination, logistic planning, counter-terrorism, and counter-insurgency as well as stabilization operations. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, noted that the exercise is aimed at promoting synergy among members of the armed forces during operations. This culture is indeed essential to the development of the operational level capacity towards tackling the multifarious contemporary security challenges and engagements in future military operations. The Defense Headquarters says there are plans to merge the three war colleges into a single institution. From the Nigerian Army War College in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Army says the recent killings, arson and destruction in the southeast of Nigeria are being executed by members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and Eastern Security Network, ESN. Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Unye Mawajiko, stated this while briefing newsmen on the ongoing army exercises across the country in Abuja. It is the handiwork of these criminals, and the public needs to understand that. And that is why we are urging members of the public to take ownership of these ongoing exercises, okay? And do what? Volunteer information to the security agencies. People that burn down your shops, that burn down your houses, people that, that make you sit at home and unable to go to work and do your businesses, are not your friends. They are against the people. And the people need to understand. These are the narratives that we expect that the media will bring uh, to, the, to the public uh, domain and let them understand that this group of people, these elements, are not working for the South, uh, Southeast people. Update on exercise Golden Dawn, Enduring Peace in Still Waters that spanned 20 states and the FCT 
The director notes has led to the rescue of 26 kidnapped victims, arrest of 23 drug peddlers, and elimination of eight IPUB members. The Nigerian army appealed to the public to provide timely intelligence report to enhance proactive operations to stem criminality. The Inspector General of Police, Usman Akalibaba, has ordered detailed investigations into the reported invasion of the Abuja residence of Justice Mary Orderly. A statement by the force indicates that the leadership of the force is not aware and did not at any time order police operatives to carry out such assignment. The IGP described the reported violation of the sanctity of the residence of the Justice of the Supreme Court as unfortunate and unacceptable. Consequently, the IGP has directed the Force Intelligence Bureau to conduct a discreet investigation into the incident. Meanwhile, the IGP has directed the Commissioner of Police, FCT Command, to strengthen security around the street and residence of Her Lordship, Justice Mary Audley, to ensure her safety and also to prevent a reoccurrence of the unfortunate incident. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari has pledged Nigeria's unalloyed commitment towards expanding the achievements of the Great Green Wall Program in Africa. Speaking at a high-level side event of the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland, the president expressed optimism that Africa's ambition of restoring over 100 million hectares of degraded landscape for productive agriculture is achievable. State House correspondent Adam Usambo brings us details. The special event aimed at accelerating land restoration in Africa, the case of the Great Green Wall Initiative, was co-organized by the Prince of Wales as well as the presidents of France and Mauritania. It was tailored towards ameliorating the problems of land degradation, desertification, depletion of the forest ecosystem, as well as biodiversity on the continent. We're fortunate to have President Buhari of Nigeria with us today. Nigeria plays a critical role in the restoration movement and has pledged to restore 4 million hectares of degraded land. This kind of ambition, coming from Africa's largest economy, underscores just how vital this issue is. With the tremendous potential of a vibrant young population and unique and precious natural landscapes, Africa is particularly well placed to seize this opportunity. So let us roll up our sleeves and start designing the creative solutions we need to secure the future for generations to come. I remember that in January on the One Planet Summit we launched an initiative of 19 billion US dollar committed. Uh, we are here and, and I can confirm uh, this 19 billion. Uh, they are committed and they are arriving. This President Muhammad Buhari noted was a direct response to the request for support by African leaders to the global communities on addressing Africa's environmental challenges for which the continent is grateful. Since the pledges by the financial partners, the United Nations Convention to combat the certification has continued to give technical backstopping to the Pan-African Agency of the Great Green Wall through the establishment of Great Green Wall Accelerator for the 2021 to 2030. This is to fast track the implementation process with the prime purpose of translating the pledged financial resources of 19.68 billion United States dollars into hectares of land restoration and other livelihood improvements at various country levels. Actions have already been taken towards actualizing the process as Nigeria participated actively in drafting and harmonizing the results framework for the accelerator with five cardinal pillars. These are the restoration of 100 million hectares of degraded land, sequestration of 250 million tons of carbon, creation of 10 million green jobs, resilient economic development in the various member states as well as capacity strengthening and development. As the effort to make available the financial resources already pledged by financial partners is still ongoing, Nigeria has taken further steps by approaching other technical partners for support. The partners include the Food and Agriculture Organization, United Nations Environment Program, United Nations Development Program, 
Global Environment Facility, with whom Nigeria is holding discussions on resource mobilization for ecosystem restoration. With all hands on deck and concerted efforts at land restoration by African leaders, I am optimistic that Africa's ambition to restore in over 100 million hectares of degraded landscape for productive agriculture is achievable. Meanwhile, as Nigeria prepares to assume the leadership of the Conference of African Heads of State and Government on the Great Green Wall, President Muhammad Buhari made it clear that member states are committed to the transformative process of restoring the continent's degraded landscape and indeed the environment. From Glasgow, Scotland, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Many thanks, Adamu. We still have more stories in COP26 in Glasgow. But that's after the break. To stay with us. Ekete Plus Plus is here and every day is now Christmas. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New customers will get an unmatched 1,000 Naira welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow SIM today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. The Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, and the management of the National Broadcasting Commission hereby invite members of the public and all stakeholders in the broadcasting industry in Nigeria to the switch on of Kano State from analog to digital terrestrial television broadcasting platform, scheduled to hold as follows. Date Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Time 11 a.m. prompt. Venue Coronation Hall, Government House, Kano. Chief Host, His Excellency Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, OFR, Executive Governor of Kano State. Host, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. NBC, your right to quality broadcasting. Announcer, Malam Balarebe Shehu Ilela, Director General. When times are tough, we know that as a mother, one thing you should never compromise on is your family's oral health because they deserve the best. Oral B, all round protection. It's great value. It protects your mouth from harmful bacteria and also protects you against tooth holes and gum problems which can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all round protection. So remember, protect their future. Oral B for healthier, stronger teeth in just one week. If you make 10 talks by this time next week, sharp, sharp. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Talk to the table. One day, I'm going to go to the store and say, I want to go. One day, one day, one day. One day, one day. Hi, Piki, how are you doing? Papa, I see me can remind you about that loan. Some loan, I beg, I beg, I beg. Hello, Papa. Your move. You're in your loan. Oh, sister of love. I won't remind you of that loan. Hello? Hello, Aga. Your clothes already. Access to finance is a major challenge for small businesses in Nigeria. But now you can level up. DBN offers sustainable financing through commercial banks, microfinance banks, and other participating financial institutions with repayment terms of up to 10 years. Need a loan? Talk to your bank today. For more information on the participating financial institution, visit devbankng.com. Development Bank of Nigeria. Financing. Sustainable growth. satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium pension. Active today. Premium tomorrow. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, hereby states that it is presently changing the old overloaded 132 kV Ikeja West Alimosho Ogba Alausa Ota Papaland to 240 megawatts transmission line with a new high capacity 500 megawatts transmission line to solve the problem of poor power supply in Ikeja West through Papaland to Axis of Lagos State.
Presently, the five power stations along that line route have a total capacity of 570 megawatts, but is only able to deliver 240 megawatts because of the old undersized transmission line. As the area continues to experience continued increase in human population and socio-economic activities, the demand for electricity supply will grow and if the line is left without upgrade, electricity supply would soon be impossible in the area. TCN had to take the hard decision of reconductoring the old 132 kV transmission line, but bearing in mind the importance of power supply, TCN is carrying out the line replacement work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. Electricity is restored by 6 p.m. in the evening to 8 a.m. in the morning daily. This is estimated to last for another four weeks from now. We sincerely apologize for every inconvenience and solicit the support and understanding of the Lagos State Governor and electricity consumers in the affected areas to enable the successful completion of this project, which when completed will greatly improve power supply through our substations in Ikeja West and Papalanto Axis of Lagos State. Announcer, Management. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Issues relating to desertification, loss of biodiversity and the negative impact of climate change on the Lake Chad region dominated discussions as President Muhammad Buhari engaged the Executive Secretary, UN Convention on Combating Desertification, Mr. Ibrahim Thia. This was on the margins of the Climate Change Conference now underway in Glasgow, Scotland. State House correspondent to the Musambo has the details. Given Nigeria's leading role in taking climate action as a signatory to the Paris Agreement, President Muhammad Buhari is seen as the face and voice of Africa at COP26. This engagement between the President and Mr. Ibrahim Thor of the United Nations is to further deepen collaboration with relevant parties towards making progress on the main goals of the conference. President Buhari flanked by the Minister of Environment, Sharon Ikiazu, as well as those of Foreign Affairs, Agriculture, culture and petroleum resources spoke at length on the negative impact of climate change on the continent and the best way forward. Educating the local communities and use of technology, the president explained are some of the priorities adopted by Nigeria towards addressing the physical and socio-economic effects of desertification, drought, and other aspects of the global challenge. Mr. Ibrahim Thaw of the United Nations congratulated President Buhari on Nigeria's imminent presidency of the heads of state and government of the Pan-African Agency on the Great Green Wall. The world, he said, is looking up to the president for leadership. The executive secretary expressed confidence that the implementation of the Great Green Wall initiative will prevent and reverse degradation of the ecosystem in the affected countries while improving the living condition of the communities. Nigeria is part of the 193 countries that have ratified the United Nations Convention towards combating desertification. From Glasgow, Scotland, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Away from Glasgow, the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Mohamed Buhari, reaffirms her continued support to improving the education of women, youths, children, and other vulnerable groups in the country. The First Lady said this in a message during the inauguration of the Future Short College in Maiduguri, Borno State. Aliyu Kabiru completes the report. Future Ashwada College is situated in Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, in a landmass area of 21,000 square meters, consisting of 24 classrooms, administrative block, multi-purpose hall, computer and science laboratories, staff quarters, and all other state-of-the-art facilities to enhance teaching and learning. In a growth in the project, the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, in a message underscored the contribution of all stakeholders for actualizing this project, which was conceived in 2017 with the aim of boosting the quality of life of the orphans and other less privileged children affected by the insurgency in order to heal their trauma towards becoming future leaders of the country. It was this despair that triggered my emotions to establish the school of this nature. The idea is to cater for the future of our children, especially the less privileged ones. Today, I'm glad that my dream has come to fruition. We are all gathered here to commission the project at last. While appreciating the First Lady's tremendous support in this direction and similar gestures, 
The governor of the state, alongside Senator Kashim Shatima, who provided the land, while serving as the state governor and other stakeholders, promised to continue doing their best. Today's event is yet another breakthrough in the provision of education for our school age children, especially the internally displaced persons, IDPs, and orphan children. It comes as no surprise that our compassionate and committed First Lady is championing such an altruistic, thoughtful, and general initiative. And that is why we are very happy to support Her Excellency in setting up this college. Future Assured College is expected to run primary section, junior and senior secondary schools, as well as train and empower women, especially widows. Already about 300 students are offered admission by the school management for the 2022 and 2023 academic session. Ali Kabir, NTA News. And from a degree, we head to Lagos, where an interagency rescue operation is ongoing to evacuate victims who are still trapped under the rubble of a collapsed building at 47 Gerald Street in Ikoi, Lagos. Adini Taiwo has an update. As at the time of filing this report, the identity of those trapped under the rubble is still unknown, although unconfirmed report says the owner of the building was among those still missing. The managing director, they were inside here doing meeting with some reports because some of the guys are inside here too. Penta, Electrician, Plumber, Macy, they are inside here. After a short, anxious moment of waiting, heavy machinery were moved to the scene to begin the clearing of the rubble from the collapsed high-rise building. The interagency effort is being supervised by the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Obafemi Amzat, while detachment of security services are also on standby to maintain law and order. Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumosu, who briefed journalists, said the operation will last all night as more equipment are being brought in to aid the rescue efforts. Three people have been rescued alive, and so far five. Five have been confirmed dead. With a yet to be a certain number of people still trapped under the rubble, it is certain that this rescue operation will go way into the midnight. The good thing is that personnel are on ground while necessary resources are being deployed to ensure that the rescue operation goes through successfully. From Gerard Street here in Ikoi, Lagos, Adini Itaiwo, NTN News. A very sad development there. Now, Ogun State Government, in its efforts to fast-track land acquisition process, has inaugurated a digital platform known as Ogun State Land Administration and Revenue Management System, OLAMS, with a primary focus on land titles ratification module. Governor Dakwo Abiodun says applicants can now obtain their certificate of occupancy, CFO, in 30 days. Lekon Abwande reports. Effective land use management system is critical in managing land resources to meet the needs of the people. To however deepen the ease of doing business, especially in land acquisition, Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodun, while inaugurating a digital land platform known as Ogun State Land Administration and Revenue Management System, OLAMS, announces a one-month moratorium for residents and entrepreneurs. Now the state is equipped with a digital solution that has automated the issuance of building permits, lease registration, CO issuance, government of concepts. Our ambition is that applicants should receive their desired documents within 30 days of fulfillment. Aside this, the platform has also opened a wide variety of opportunities for individuals in acquiring land for residential, commercial, and industrial purposes without hindrance. The introduction of owners will allow the much needed efficiency, transparency, and accountability in land management. The schemes available for sale on the Olam's website include Hill Crest Estate at Beokuta and the President Mamadou Buari Estate along Kobakwe Road at Beokuta. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NT News. In other news, Hunir continues efforts in providing good services to the people. The senator representing Adamawa Central at the National Assembly 
Aisha Dahiru Ahmed Benani has shared vehicles to women, youth, and faith-based organizations. Nafisatu Abdul Hamid Dembus reports that the gesture is to ease their social economic development. This is the second time the senator is reaching out to the citizenry in one week. She shared over 2,000 bedding sets to IDPs in Fufore and Yola South local government areas. This time around, she shared out to religious bodies, youth, and women organizations where she presented them with vehicles to, among other things, ease their activities and increase their income, especially for women and the youth. Those buses are given to these organizations because of the importance attached to them and the activities they undertake in promoting peaceful coexistence in our diverse multi-religious communities in Adama State as a whole. They thank Senator Binani and promise to make good use of the vehicles for optimum results. A very, very good representative, a philanthropist, who cares about the people. She had the heart of a mother. We don't even know the kind of word that Hutu will use to thank her, but honestly, we thank her. The vehicles shared include four 18 seaters buses, seven Siena, 144 motorcycles, among others. Nafisa to Abdul Hamid Dembos, NTA News. Let's have a feel of the Center of Excellence now as we join Adiola. Adiola, let's hear you. Thank you, Iara. Retaining the number one spot in the supply of liquefied natural gas as well as petroleum gas for domestic consumption and the development of a gas value chain in the country will not be compromised. Managing Director Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Philip and Shell Bila said apart from developing the gas sector, NLNG's quest to improve science and literature and literary criticism will be sustained, Abuladi Salami reports. NLNG has announced Nigeria's vast natural gas resources. The gas company in protecting the environment has converted over 146 billion standard cubic meters or 5.16 trillion cubic feet of associated gas to exports as LNG with a view to reducing gas flaring. The efforts in growing local content will pay off significantly in the Train 7 project. We can proudly tell Nigerians that 55% of both the engineering and procurement activities of this monumental project will be carried out in Nigeria by Nigerian vendors. As a reputable global LNG company that prides itself with excellence, integrity and teamwork, the fourth biggest private sector investment in Nigeria celebrated some exceptional people with cash prizes and awards for the 2020-2021 Nigeria Prize for Science, Literature and Literary Criticism as a way of encouraging quality writing. On the Nigeria Prize for Literature, it has grown since inception in 2004 to become one of the most prestigious rewards for writing in Africa. This year's contest had 202 entries for literature that was later pruned down by the advisory board for literature before finally shortlisting three books with The Son of the House, written by Cheluchi Oyemelukwe, the margin winner, while Uchuchuku won the prize for literary criticism. It is definitely one of the um, things keeping our literature alive, and I thank you for continuing. The prize award for science and literature books that commenced since 2004 LNG said is to encourage development of science, to seek solutions to problems and positive effects of writing, as well as reading culture among the people. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. Now, as a first tier bank with strong financial capital base, Zenith Bank Nigeria, leader in the financial market, has increased its profit before tax to 180 billion naira, for third quarter of 2021. In a report from the bank on audited results, gross earnings increased by 2% to 519 billion naira from 
509 billion naira. Again, Abolade Salami reports. With a capital adequacy ratio of 20.1%, surpassing the 15% required by the Central Bank of Nigeria, for commercial banks with international authorization, Zenith Bank no doubt leads while others follow. The bank total deposits as of 30th of September 2021 rose to 6 trillion naira, representing an increase of 13% from 5.34 trillion naira in December of 2020. As a first year financial institution committed to a robust capital base, the bank grew its net earnings through a reduction in the cost of funds while keeping the cost of risk flat. This helped to strengthen earnings per share by 1% to 5 naira 11 kobo, with a 9% increase in interest income from loans. To maintain this positive trajectory and grow retail deposits, the bank says remarkable improvements in transaction volume and value across its digital platforms are strong indications for growth in third quarter of 2021. The bank is ever hopeful that in the fourth quarter of the year, despite the volatility in the global oil price, inflationary trend, and uncertainty in the foreign exchange inflows, it will consolidate its leadership position in the corporate segment and maintain a robust balance sheet. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. And we're done from here. We'll take another break. The news will continue at thereafter. Please stay with us. The NECA's network of entrepreneurial women new cordially invites the general public to its 2021 summit, date 2nd and 3rd November 2021. Venue, NECA House, Plot A2, Hakim Balogun Way, Alausa, Ikeja, Lagos. Time, 9 a.m. daily. Keynote speakers include Mr. Bayosani, Chairman, New Women's Microfinance Bank, Janet Adeto, MD CEO, JSK Consulting Group, Honorable Adewumi O Onanuga, Chairman, House Committee on Women Affairs and Social Development, Mrs. Yemisi Iranluye, MD CEO, Sultry International Company Limited, Mrs. Mudupe Oyekule, ED, Masterpiece Resource Development Center, Taiwo Oluleye, Acting MD, Pan Nigeria Limited. Mrs. Buki Adeyemi, Chairperson, 2021 Summit Planning Committee, Announcer. Glow Breaker Tip Plus Plus is here, and every day is now Christmas. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New customers will get an unmatched 1,000 Naira welcome bonus to activate by a new Glow SIM today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. That time of the year again, every year, for the past 25 years, Public Policy Research and Analysis Center, PPRAC, honors the most accomplished leaders with the Zig Prize in Leadership Award. This year, the list is awesome. His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Samwulu, His Excellency, Engineer Abdullah Hisule, Senator Anyim Pius Anyim, Senator Dr. Olorunimbe Mamora, Mrs. Ekaite Unoma Ekpabio, Dr. Akimumi Ayodeji Adeshina, Malam Nele Kolokiyari, Dr. Bashir Wai Jamu, Mr. UK Eke, and Mr. Uche Oji. We invite you to be a part of this epochal event at the Eco Hotel Convention Center, Lagos, date 7th of November 2021, under the distinguished chairmanship of Dr. Okwesileze Mwodo, Royal Guest of Honor, Alhaji Aminu Aduba Yaro, Emir of Kano, Chief Host, Sama Kumabara. Don't let anything stop you being active. But when headache strikes, I always trust to dress Hello. headache and fever. Hello. For body pain, Hello. trust to dress joint and muscle pain. Hello. Sudrex, effective medicine for headache and pain relief, and trusted for more than 20 years. Sudrex, overcome pain challenge, win your day. You're always running around. Keeping up with you needs a comforting touch from Huggies with the right stretch for how much you move. Huggies pads comfortably fit baby's tummy. Their 360 degree comfort fit waistband makes them easy to open and pull off and on so baby can keep on exploring and you keep doing great mom.
geese. Recommended by 9 out of 10 mothers for comfort. What's the difference between regular data and MTN data? I'll show you. With regular data, you get this. But with MTN data, you get moved right into the action like this. data you don't just get more you experience more need loads of data to live your dream turn it up on MTN the reliable data network sometimes before I step on stage my mind gets clouded but that's when I know it's time to take that deep tum tum cooling breath <sighs> Glad to have you back. The Supreme Court has fixed 17th of January 2022 to hear the application filed by the River State Government challenging the jurisdiction of courts in oil wells suit instituted by the River State Government against Amo State. The state is also seeking to stop the federal government from ceding the 17 oil wells to Imo State. Counsels to Attorney General of the Federation and those of Imo State Government, Remy Olobora and Ulushala Oki, SAN, informed the court that they have filed two motions challenging the competence and jurisdiction of the court. They argued that the application should take precedence over the substantive suit. The appellant councils, however, opposed the move, suggesting that the summons filed by the River State Government for direction ought to be heard by first the court as a way of streamlining the various applications. The appellant councils also urged the court to hear both applications jointly. The settlement panel, led by Justice Kudirat Kikere Ekun, after hearing the submissions of the parties, fixed the date for further hearing. River State Government had taken the Attorney General of the Federation and Imo State Government to court, seeking interpretations of the boundary between rivers and Imo State, alleging that the delineation on Nigeria administrative map and others are inaccurate and do not represent legitimate boundaries between both states. And from the courtroom, we head to the National Assembly, where more agencies of government are appearing before committees for appraisal of financial performance and projections for 2021 and 2022. A National Assembly correspondent, Lamia Ali, reports on the session with Administrative Staff College of Nigeria and the Federal Loans Board. The Administrative Staff College of Nigeria at this budget defense session with the House Committee on Public Service Matters said its allocation for 2022 is 1.5 billion naira, out of which about 800 million naira is from internally generated revenue. Subvention overhead costs 99 million 299,631 naira. The Public Service Institute of Nigeria, the ASCOM, definitely government will not continue to run you. You have to look in order to see how you can generate revenue. You have all it takes to get money. The federal government staff housing loans board told the committee it disbursed 1.7 billion naira revolving loan to 363 civil servants in 2021. If we give them the amount that they cannot be able to pay before they retire uh, from the service, it will be a problem. So we normally used to look at their years of service and their grade level. The board is projecting more than 2 billion naira as collections for 2022. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Elsewhere, the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, has said that the proposed presidential VIP wing of the State House Clinic will, in addition to the President, the Vice President and their families, also take care of visiting heads of states if the need arises. State House correspondent Jido Nifade reports. At the groundbreaking ceremony of the facility at the State House Precinct, Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, described the project as an essential facility 
as it is important to have the best facility for the president, the first family, and other very distinguished senior officers of government. It's also a facility when uh, finished will be available in case we have visiting president, visiting heads of state who may require uh, medical support and assistance during their visit. It is to the glory of God and for the good of man. From here, we move forward with the full construction activity. Permanent Secretary of State House, Tijani Omar, says it is expected that the construction and commissioning would be done by December 2022. Present at the occasion were the Chief Medical Director of State House Clinic, Dr. Munir Husseini Yakasai, and other members of the State House top management, as well as the construction team of Julius Bajan, Nigeria. And the State House, today, Onifade and the News. 62 years after the introduction of television in Nigeria, a university done is advocating tracking development in the broadcast ecosystem to make the tube relevant to the globe at all times. This was in a live studio discussion on NTAs Nationwide. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga reports. 62 years ago, modernity was launched in the Nigeria's media landscape with the coming of what people see and hear, a form of reality. That is the television, which at the present world undergo divergence and convergence in the new media age. But that reality, which typifies television, remained reliable in shaping public opinions and setting agenda. Now, this university done says, for the gains of 62 years of promotion of peace and national integration to be surpassed, the conventional media must change its approach to absorb emerging threats by the new media. The future of the media is in video and audio, and television has that advantage. So how do we now capitalize on it by investing massively in the technology, investing massively in content to ensure that we are able to get younger people to be with us. Otherwise, the competition is steep from the internet, the social media is there, and the number of television stations are also increasing on a daily basis. And don't forget, you are competing for equal attention or for the same attention of the same number of people. Hmm. So for you to get people to follow you and counter all these fake speeches and hate messages, you must be up and doing and produce counter messages. The Nigerian Television Authority was specifically appreciated for its capacity in growing with the philosophy of the nation and placing public interest above individual through its program content and reportage. Yes. If you look at the NTA, for example, you have all your stations uh, spread over the, uh, in almost every corner of this country. The principal reason is to ensure that this station or, or the NTA as an organization is able to bring the nation to the door of every citizen so that from here you know what is happening elsewhere and that will help to reduce the level of anxiety in our people for them to get to know more about the other side and then there could be peace and tranquility okay. in the system the doyen of communication says the monopoly enjoyed by the traditional the media is no longer visible in the contemporary world and appeals for the creation of more platforms but for credibility and high-level competition in Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. Another break is due. Please stay. Democracy on the move. As a number of state holds its governorship election Saturday, November 6. That's our focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week on the smooth conduct of the election. Tuesday Live. Incisive and educative. Don't miss it. Confidence is important in life's little moments. Strong tea can help, even if they get her into trouble sometimes. A great smile is useful to break the ice. And making friends is easier when you know you have fresh breath. I give my family confidence with Pepsodent Triple Protection 123. Its antibacterial action formula gives them cavity protection, white teeth, and fresh breath. The confidence of three to paste in one. Pepsodent Triple Protection 123. Not all washing powders are the same. 
Sunlight adds bursts of freshness to cleaning power to give you sunlight two in one. For sensational cleaning and freshness that lasts. Sunlight two in one. Sensational cleaning with burst after burst of freshness. Introducing Sunlight with luxurious wood fragrance. The Ozioko family in Umuarua village of Ukba town and Amsister Translation of Chief Joseph Oge Ozioko, burial arrangements, 2nd November 2021, Christian Wake at Ozioko family compound, time 6 p.m. 3rd November 2021, Requin Mass at St. Paul's Catholic Church of Ukba, time 11 a.m. Announcer, Mr. Steve Ozioko, Managing Director, New Health Pharmacy for the family. The leadership crisis rocking the Plato State House of Assembly continued Monday as rival supporters of the new and embattled speaker clashed at the assembly complex in Jaws. Abdul Wahab Baba Kanti reports that the development is paralyzing legislative activities in the House. The former speaker was impeached on October 27th, and Yakub Sanda from Pengana constituency was elected as Abognuhu Ayuba's replacement to champion the cause of the Plateau State Legislative Organ. This does not go down well with the embattled speaker and the lawmakers loyal to him as they tried to gain access to his office for executive session preparatory for a sitting when some youth started protests at the assembly complex in his support. Some youth believed to be loyal to the new speaker also protested in his support. This degenerated into a pandemonium. However, security personnel intervened and brought the situation under control by beefing up security within and outside the assembly complex. Shortly after that, the new speaker and 12 lawmakers briefed newsmen where he appealed to his colleagues to cooperate with him in the discharge of his responsibilities. In Jaws, Abdul Habbankanti, NTA News. Let's have a bit of sports now with Tamara Ebewe. Thank you, Ian Ray. Welcome to Sports Update. Super Eagles coach Gernot Vaux has invited 24 players to camp ahead of Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers against Liberia and Cape Verde. The Super Eagles battle the lone stars of Liberia in Morocco on Saturday, November 13, and then the final group game against Cape Verde's Blue Sharks at the Taslim Balogun Stadium on Tuesday, November 16. Staying with the Super Eagles, reactions trail the return of Odion Igalo to the Super Eagles list for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifier. Odion Igalo, who announced his retirement after the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, scored 16 goals in 35 matches for Nigeria between 2015 and 2019. Really sad. I am one of those people who felt that Ogden oh, Gallo should have rejected that invite to the national team. Uh, uh, no matter how you look at it, it's not as if even when he was in the active service, it was all that rosy for him. You can't take it away from him. He's a good striker in the game. Experience actually can't. But uh, the thing is that does he really have, you know, uh, that stamina? And in handball. Ahead of the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations, built for Morocco in January, the national teams will open camping in Abuja this November with the home-based professionals. National handball coach Rafiu Salami says the team will also camp in some African countries as part of preparations. They will have a break for about two or four days. Then a professional will join them. I will join them later. Then we will try and go and have a plane to Tunisia or Morocco for two weeks before the competition starts. So I'm friendly match again, big team too. And that's at Sports Update. Ian Ray, back to you. Thank you, Tamara. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, on behalf of the Federal Executive Council, commiserates with the government and people of Katsina State over the death of former Minister of Agriculture and Water Resources, Abba Sayadi Ruma. In a condolence message, DSGF describes late Abba Ruma as an educationist of note whose contributions led to the formulation of various policies in both the agricultural and educational sectors which impacted positively on the growth and development of the country. 
The late Abba Roma served as Minister of Agriculture and Water Resources under the administration of late President Omar Musa Yaradua between 2007 and 2010. He was also Minister of State for Education in 2005, as well as Minister of Education in 2007 under the administration of President Olusegun Obasanjo. Plateau State Governor Simon Bakula Long has described as a colossal loss the death of elder statesman Captain Joseph Dane, who passed on recently at the age of 84. A statement from Dr. Makot Simon Macham, Director of Press Public Affairs, to the Governor acknowledged the deceased long record of patriotism, hard work, mentorship, and sacrifices to national development. The Governor condoled his immediate family and the entire state, urging all to sustain his legacies of love, entrepreneurship, philanthropy, and goodwill should be sustained to honor his memory. And that's Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching. Please remember that the fight against rape and rapists is still on. Do your part. I'm Yen Rijan. Good night.